I'm a natural light photographer. Whenever I hear someone say that, what I actually hear them saying is, I have no idea how to use lighting, but I get it. Lighting can seem overwhelming. Equipment is expensive. It takes time and effort to learn. And the more elements you add, the more complicated it gets. I'm about to show you a cheat code that you can use to light just about anything. It's cheap, easy, and quick. And once you learn it, you'll have it forever. Let's have a look. All you need to remember is three letters, A, K, B. Ambient, key, and bounce. If you do this, then picking your settings and lighting your subject becomes a very simple step-by-step -step process. You won't just be taking a good picture, you'll be understanding what makes a good picture and how to take a good picture in the future as well. At its heart, this process is very simple. We're gonna be adding light in on one side and bouncing it back on the other. But most photographers, and I include myself in that, have the tendency to just throw a bunch of gear up and turn it all on at once. Even if you're experienced, this is a bad way to approach it. You won't understand how each of the elements is working and it becomes very difficult to make the sort of small adjustments that take your good shot and make it into a fantastic shot. To make life easier from now on, I want you to think about lighting in layers. Our first layer is gonna be the ambient exposure. This will be the basis for our camera settings. Think of it as the canvas upon which we are about to paint. Some things to consider are, how much depth of field do I need in this image? I.e., what should my aperture be? And how much natural light or available light do I want in my final image? If you're using flash, then you could think of this layer as every part of the image that the flash won't be touching. In this example, I'm gonna be using flash to demonstrate the point. If you're interested in the year that I'm using, stick around because a bit later I'll run through it all. This whole kit costs less than $100. You can also find all the links in the description below. Okay, so in this case, my subject is just a single person, me. So I don't need anything too crazy in terms of depth of field, but I do want to remove most of the ambient light from the exposure. So let's start at 1 1 60th of a second F5 ISO 100. And here's what our first image looks like. As you can see, there is barely any ambient light in this exposure. So let's build it up from here. Our second layer is going to be the key light. The key light is your primary light source in any image. In this case, I'm going to be using a simple flash through an umbrella. Some things to consider here are, what is the direction of your light and where do you want your shadows? And the quality of light. How will you shape the light that you have at your disposal? What will the shadows look like? Will they have a hard edge? Will they have a soft fall off? So with our ambient exposure of 1 1 60th F5 ISO 100, we're gonna bring in our flash at 1 8th power. You can see the light source here wrapping around my face and falling off on one side. These shadow areas are what remains of our first layer, the ambient exposure. You're most of the way there now, so let's learn how to add a little bit of finesse into your image. Okay, the final step, let's talk about bounce for a second here. In some ways, you could use this term interchangeably with the term fill. Fill light refers to the depth and balance of the dark areas in your scene, aka the contrast. There are several ways to control your fill, but they don't all work exactly the same. In my opinion, bounce light is the best option 95% of the time. For example, you can always open up your shutter speed and let a little bit more ambient light into the image. This can help you lift the shadows and it won't affect your flash exposure, but you're limited in your settings a little bit. If the shutter speed is too low, there's potential for motion blur or shutter drag, especially if there are other strong light sources in your frame. You may also get unwanted color creeping into the shadows from the existing light sources in your room. Maybe there's some artificial lighting, some downlights or some fluoros. In this case, the lighting in your house or studio may cause the shadows to look green or yellow. On the flip side, if you set your shutter speed too high, then the flash won't be able to keep up. Most cameras will max out at about 1 200th of a second before you start to see black bars at the top or bottom of your image. You could also add in another light at a very low power. This would give you the ability to eliminate all the ambient light and just completely control how much light goes into your image. But the issue here is that with another light, you're introducing more shadows in the opposite direction and possibly more reflections too. This sort of image tends to lose its subtlety a bit and tends to feel a bit more artificial. So let's just use bounce light. It's a way to keep things very simple, but still execute on them very well. In this case, we're gonna be using a piece of white foam core. Some things to consider here are how light or dark do we want our shadows and what direction do we want the fill light to be coming from. It's very simple. For the most part, we're gonna be placing our foam core as close as we can to the subject without it entering the frame. The closer your bounce board, the lighter the shadow, or conversely, the further away the deeper the shadow will be. It's also worth playing with the direction. For example, if I rotate it more towards the lens, it's gonna catch more of the front of my face. Or if I rotate it more around to the back, it's gonna catch a little bit less light, but fill in the back of me and leave some contrast in the front still. 
If you want to get really fancy, you can bounce in some negative fill to darken your shadows. This basically does the exact opposite of the white bounce. Instead of bouncing light in, you're going to be removing light from that side. I recommend getting a couple of pieces of black and a couple of pieces of white foam core. They're really easy to store flat under a bed or in the back of a cupboard, and they're only like $10 each from your local art supply store. So let's have a look at all the shots together. Here's the first layout with the ambient light. Here's the second layout with the key light. And here's the final layout with the bounce. We can also try this technique with natural light. In this example, our ambient exposure is going to be the same as our key light because it's all the same light source, but we can still approach it the same way. A, K, B. Light comes in on one side, we're bouncing it back in on the other. So starting with the A, the ambient exposure, I'm going to be setting this at about F7.1 because I want to get all three products in focus here. I need a more deep depth of field. Then because it's ambient light, I can just set the other settings accordingly. 1 100th of a second, F7.1, ISO 320. Step two, the key light. The direction here is going to be pretty much straight left to right. That's because I wanted to light the background evenly as well as the foreground. I'm using it just with an open window here, but you could also draw the curtain here for some extra diffusion if you wanted. And finally, the bounce. Very simple here, we're pretty much just bouncing back in just straight right to left for an almost shadowless image. The idea is to make it look even and consistent like it was shot in the studio. Okay, it's time to talk about some of the products that will help you out here. You don't need to spend a lot of money to start implementing this. At the very least, just some foam core from your local art supply shop. It's about $10 a sheet. Grab a couple black, couple white, it's a no brainer. I would also highly recommend this clip from Niwa. It attaches to the spigot of any light stand. I use it all the time. It's extremely inexpensive and one of the best value for money pieces of grip you can get in my opinion. Instead of the foam core, you could also use something like a five in one reflector, but in my opinion, the results are going to be a little bit less consistent. Number one, just because of the shape of it. And number two, the surfaces tend to be quite reflective. It's really good for outdoors though, especially if you have an assistant to help you hold it. If you need a bigger bounce, for example, for a bigger subject or a full length portrait, typically we'd use something like a, a larger piece of foam core on a stand or something like a V flat. But these are expensive and they're bulky and they're just not practical to have in your home. So my personal recommendation is this collapsible black and white backdrop. With this little clip on the light stand, it makes for a very portable and very effective bounce or negative fill. In terms of flash, for this video, I'm using one of the most inexpensive flashes available. This one is made by Niwa, although their models tend to change and sometimes can be a bit hard to find. So I'll put some links to some alternatives in the description below. The trigger is also made by Niwa. It's extremely affordable. If you're just learning and tight on funds, this is the one I would recommend. The umbrella is also, yes, you guessed it, made by Niwa. In my opinion, it's the best affordable lighting modifier you can get. If you're after a light stand that is cheap, but tall and sturdy, look no further this one is like $37 Australian it is the best light stand I've ever seen for under $50 if you like this video and want to take things further I've just put a video on screen now where I teach you the principles of three-point lighting